Okay, first piece is going to be a folio from a Quran. Um, so this is obviously a paper piece, uh, so or you know, parchment paper. Um, so you want to think about all the other pieces that have to do with books and writing that we have done when we look at this piece, right? Because we want to think about this in comparison to something like Linda's Farm Gospels or Vienna Genesis or um, the, um, excuse me, the uh, Bible uh, morally say from uh, St. Louis. Um, the other one, of course, is going to be the Golden Haggadah, right? So um, you can notice, of course, here that what we're dealing with Islamic um, sacred uh, items. We, of course, are dealing with things that do not have uh, uh, figurative, uh, figural imagery, excuse me. Um, so we do not see images of people or animals, though we do have those arabesques and those decorative qualities uh, to help um, make it more beautiful. And the idea of making it beautiful is really key here, okay? Because we're dealing a bit with the word of God here, um, the word of God that was dictated to uh, Muhammad through the archangel Gabriel, right? Uh, and so it's, it, it is uh, very important that the text appear beautiful um, to honor uh, to honor that, okay? So here we are. Let me hide that, actually. Okay. Um, so uh, Arab proverb, purity of writing is purity of soul. So again, the emphasis on um, the, the, the beauty of the, of, the, of the actual physical appearance of the words on the page. The word Quran means recitation. And again, as I said, uh, the, the belief is that the archangel Gabriel recited the Quran to Muhammad, right? So it's coming um, not from God himself, but what God's one of God's highest representatives, right? Uh, so there's a desire to represent the sacred words as beautifully as possible. So the writing of uh, Qurans, you know, the physical writing of them, you know, to copying and, and uh, so they can be, it can be proliferated, uh, was considered a holy task. Um, it wasn't just something that somebody just kind of took up. Right. So there's a lot of training that went into it, very much like um, the creation in some ways of icons. If you remember when I, we looked at the um, we looked at uh, the Atokos uh, uh, between uh, between St. Theodore and George, I mentioned uh, icons aren't just like. Yeah, I'll paint an icon. I'm a painter, so I'll paint an icon. The idea is that there's prayer involved and it's, there's this kind of special holy training involved in that as well. So we, we can connect it that way. So, so it's a holy task. It takes a lot of training. Um, the type of script that we were looking at in ours uh, is Kufic script, right? So there are lots of different styles of um, Arabic calligraphy. Um, Kufic script is particularly angular and dignified, but there's lots of different types of script. This is writing, this is writing, this is writing. They're different, right? Um, so uh, so th there's not just Kufic, oh, but Kufic is the oldest one. All right. Um, and as you've already gotten, it's super important. The script is important because it was recited in verse to Muhammad's followers. Um, and so you want to make sure the person who's reading it, of course, sees the beauty so that maybe some of that kind of importance, that dignity can be conferred, uh, conferred to the people who are listening. And as I mentioned before, of course, it comes from uh, Archangel Gabriel. Um, uh, I, yeah, I'll skip that. Um, also, there's anakinism. Right, as I mentioned earlier, we don't have emphasis on figural imagery. So uh, the other things that are drawn, that are created, uh, need to kind of take the place of the beauty of the human figure that might uh, might be there. Right. Uh, so instead of emphasizing the beauty of the human figure, there's the emphasis of, of the of the script. Um, so also the idea is that it provides both information, sacred sacred word, but also the pleasure the pleasure of, um, of looking at the beauty of the words on the page. Uh, a surah is a chapter in the Quran. Um, in our particular uh, folio from the Quran, uh, the title of each surah is written in gold. So we can see that, right? 
Um, Arabic is read for, not for, uh, not from left to right like we like English is, but from right to left. Okay. Um, so the text of each surah. So let's look at our at our at our big page, right? So there's the title. There's the surah written in gold. Okay. Um, and then the text of each surah, let's get back here, uh, is further divided, of course, into verses. That shouldn't seem um, particularly, it, it, you know, strange to you. Uh, you know, if, when we think about holy texts, uh, we often refer to specific verses from the holy texts, right? So even though there are chapters, there are also specific verses that are attached to, you know, a particular set of lines, right? So that people can call up particular chapters and verses and know them um, more specifically. Um, so, and those those uh, those verses are indicated, that the, the division between the verses are indicated by those gold triangles, right? So we have this emphasis, this is how this is ordered, this is how this is organized. That would have to do with form, wouldn't it? Um, so our particular folio, right, uh, each page is uh, has nine lines um, of text maximum. Um, so that's really uh, an emphasis on the wealth of the patron um, and also his appreciation for the sacredness of the text. Why? Because it was not cheap to produce these things. And, and, and parchment was also not entirely cheap, even though it is just kind of paper. Um, so the emphasis here on, you know, spending is, you know, spending money that's appropriate for given the given the. Um, given what's happening, uh, given what this is about, right? Uh, there's other ways that this is uh, divided, organized onto a page. There's a height to width ratio of two to three. Uh, there's a lot of, sorry, there are a lot of details here that you don't necessarily need to know. Uh, just need to know that, there, that the height to width ratio is two to three. Um, and, and, the, and that is determined uh, the height is in fact determined by the first letter of the alphabet, um, and uh, so so there's a lot of organization here. That's a very specific organization. Spe also, each line is divided, as you can see here. Now, this is this isn't what it actually looks like. They've they've shown the lines for you, the drum lines in for you. The the, the height um, is also uh, or the height of a of a letter, of a particular letter, of course, is derived from the first letter of the alphabet, but the way a particular letter looks like certain parts of the letter are determined, you know, how high it goes up is determined by these interlines. Um, so let's see here. Uh, so, uh, so it was memorizing and producing the proportions of each pen stroke uh, was part of the training. So it wasn't just like you could become a scribe, you, you write in Kufic script, but how you want. Um, it was very specific. It was very, um, very guided, right? All right. So you want to think about stylistic conventions in the creation of the Quran. Um, what do they convey about spiritual beliefs? Uh, you want to think about how that's indicated through visual evidence and contextual evidence. Um, uh, hint, hint, you should think about that. Okay. That's that work.